Well, good morning and welcome to this latest live chat. This is the first one I've done in a really long time, but we've got some exciting, big, big news. And I can't see any of the uh, the chat at all, which is really exciting. Uh, I'm going to open it up on a laptop and try and read my own live chat. Oh, that's echoey. Uh, so hello to the one person who's watching so far. I'll just let a couple more people join the chat. I've got four people now. That's good. Hello. Um, right. So, yes, I'm going to try and uh, keep the live chat going on. I have to get threads up, sorry. So long since I've done this, I'm completely out of practice. So, first question, can you guys hear me okay? In fact, I'll talk to myself. Practice. Yes, I can, yes. It's quite clear, so I don't want any complaints about the volume this time. I'm in a car, which is a small area. I've got my headphones in, which got microphone, which should work, and it should be fine. Hello, so who we got? We've got uh, Jimmy, morning. Paul, good morning. Car, something, hello. Uh, Matthew, hello. And Paul, and other Paul, and... Paulie, yes, oh, lots of people. Oh, Stefan, wow, brilliant. Lots of people, excellent. And uh, yeah, so I've got many items of big, exciting news to say. First, most exciting thing of all to say is the garage door works now. <laughs> My dad came around last night and uh, together we managed to solve the problem. It's only got two of its three hanging things holding the front door up now instead of well, the intended three, but it's, it's there, it's working. So massive news. Oh, afternoon, yes, it is afternoon, isn't it? It's after 12. Um, so yeah, that is exciting news. So now I can get the jacks back out and I can take the Crown Victoria off the axle stands and we can finish that car, which is exciting news. Second exciting news, I pulled a watch out of the drawer this morning, which I've not worn in absolutely months. It's a wind up mechanical one. And you know, what was really weird. It was actually the correct time on that, um, on that watch. It's bizarre, really odd. Anyway, but that's not the big news this you're here for. The big news is, I'm trying to catch this on the thing. Um, Yes, as I've just announced on Twitter and Facebook and as Ian and Steph have just announced as well on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and probably threads as well where I've done it, we are going to be back at the NEC in November, which is, I think, the 8th or 9th or something. That long weekend, that Friday through to Sunday, we're going to be there all three days. We're going to each going to have a car. We're going to have a stand selling merchandise so you can help us pay for our petrol to go home again. And, um, yeah, we're going to be there for the whole weekend. Come and say hello. Come and get a photo with us. And, yeah, just, just come and have a chat, basically. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a really, really exciting time. So we are, I believe, either in Hall 3 or 3A. Uh, the map I've got actually cuts off the bottom of the map. So it's the far end from the top of Hall 3A. Oh, we'll we'll, we'll publicise it later on properly so you can come and find us more accurately. But we're in 3 slash 3A. Uh, we're going to have three cars, fairly decent size stand there. Um, cars are TBA uh, because we don't really know what we're going to be um, driving yet. Uh, I've... Uh, uh, Steph, I think... Um, I, I don't know what she's driving. Actually, I need to go and check Twitter and things. Um, I can't do that right now because I'm talking to you. <laughs> But I've got multiple choices. Uh, someone just said, uh, often someone's saying, what my car am I bringing? Um, someone said the year's flown by, which is actually, yeah, frightening. It seems no time at all since we're there. Someone just said, how about bringing the Punto? Now, Punto, I would quite like to bring for two reasons. First of all, it is, as you know, the oldest Punto in Great Britain. And that is quite exciting. Um, and yes, the newest car on the fleet. And it's, uh, yeah, really quite cool. Um, but there are two things not to bring that. Firstly, uh, it's been on the Fiat UK Club um, back in the springtime. Uh, so it's been to the NEC previously. And I always like to try and bring a car that hasn't been there before. Um, and secondly, it's not very big. <laughs> and if you've seen the amount of stuff we take up there, it's, it's huge. It's the amount, all the tables, the, the boxes of T-shirts, mugs and things. This year, I'm focusing more on, on mugs and stickers and things rather than uh, T-shirts. Because T-shirts take up so much space. Uh, so the Punto, unfortunately, is out unless things get desperate. Someone else just said, take the 75, which I'm actually sat in right now. Um, this car is actually for sale. There is an advert on Car and Classic for it right now. Um, I don't want to let it go, but yeah, yeah, it's a big, big car. It wouldn't actually fit on the stand we've got. We, well, we've got a decent size stand for three cars. Um, yeah, this is probably going to be too big for that stand. And you never know, it might have sold by then. Um, if, if you're lucky slash unlucky, if, depending how you look at things. A oh, marina has been announced. I wasn't sure if uh, Steph had made it public that she was taking the marina or not. But apparently, according to the comments, Steph has announced she's taking Tina the marina. So, yeah, and nothing like a deadline to work to when you've got no sills in your car. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Crown Victoria probably won't be coming uh, for the lack of sill reasons and also because it's massive and it's been there before. Someone else just commented, uh, take the 420 GSI Tourer. Um, that would be a really good one to take if, and this is an enormous if, 
that car is back from the paint shop in time, then that would be the ideal choice because it's, it's a Toro, it's, it's a cavern on wheels. So um, we could take that one quite happily and that'd be a really good choice. But I don't know if it's actually going back from the paint shop in time because uh, the, the place that have got it really, really good, but paint shops are slow. It's a fact of life. It's not like on Discovery Channel when they drop it in and they've got three days to fix the car from a rusted shell to save the shop. Um, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't happen like that in real life. It takes months. Um, so then we've got, what else we got? Um, 200 VI is, that is currently the Volkswagen Beetle option, like on Top Gear Adventures when they're driving across uh, or Africa or something, and there's a Beetle following. The 200 VI is the Beetle option, not because it's um, dull or bad or anyway, it's just, it's too safe. <laughs> There's no, there's no drama in that one. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to take that car though. That's quite a fun looking car. That's keeping an eye on the things. Darren saying bring the 75 and put an ad in the screen. That's actually not a bad idea. But as I just said, I don't mind not seeing that. It's physically too big to put on the stand. We're each going to have to take like a, a medium sized car because I would, wouldn't mind taking a P6 up there. But I think that's going to overhang. And the NEC are monumentally strict about um, keeping your stuff within your your stand they don't like it if you even put like a corner of a bumper over so the, the p6s are kind of out for that that reason as well um someone's just take to take hippo i did actually consider the hippo i am thinking i'm that is a possibility because the shortlist really for the nec from my point of view um the 200 vi but and this is a real sad thing about the car it doesn't look exciting it's not got that kind of wow factor when you see it at a show which is a shame because it's a really really good car so kind of down to the alpha 145 uh, mini r50 so adam uh no because uh, it's too little i couldn't i could barely get a thing in it to take up there i'd need to take a, a support car carrying everything and that's something i can't really do unfortunately um i was gonna say yes alpha 145 yeah that is my favorite choice However, it is currently lacking a clutch, so it'll only get as far as maybe the first couple of exits of the M25 before we're being trailered home again. I have got it booked in with Go Italia. If we can make sure it all gets done in time, then the Alpha is the first choice because it's big enough to put my stuff in. It's comfortable enough to do the journey uh, quite happily. Um, it's got really good radio in it, which is a factor for that journey. Um, and... It is very, very rare. It'll probably be the only one in the entire show. And that's a consideration I'm kind of giving a thought to. Is it going to be something that's going to be duplicated elsewhere? Um, someone's just said Tomcat. I'd love to set Tomcat up there, but like the Mini, it's not huge. So um, I'd struggle to get stuff in unless I had another car bringing boxes of gear for me. Um, the Tomcat would unfortunately be out again. But also, there is um, a Tomcat club. So there's going to be lots of other Tomcats in the show already. Oh, Mike saying, yeah, the Alpha 145 is the one he'd like to see. Um, can I put a roof tent on Hippo and a combo? <laughs> yeah, Do you know what? I actually did think of taking the Hippo up and making the roof tent part of the display and just sneaking in there each night. And then I thought I was pay for a hotel. Could still happen. Uh, yeah, Hippo, though, is actually another option because I would quite fancy taking Hippo up um, and then putting the, if there was room on the stand to put the roof tent up, that would be a really cool uh, display. Plus, it would also mean we've got somewhere... Uh, it's like a flag effectively so it's a big thing look how do we find our stand look for the big roof tent in the distance that'd be quite cool uh, someone just said take the wife uh she's probably going to come up on on sunday but um she's got to work on friday and probably saturday as well so she can't necessarily come up um and be part of this whole adventure sadly uh ian will have the same problem with what to take yeah i think ian did have a choice but then it broke again um but that goes for all of his cars being generally broken Oh, skipping off to the subject. Uh, Jay, any news on the P6? Yes, news is coming on the P6, but not until I've got actual solid news, so I won't spoil that one. Um, uh, da, da, da. Someone, James, loved the 75 and ZT video. Imagine if the plants aligned to do a 75 V8 versus a ZT V8. Oh, that'd be a good video. I'd like to do that. Um, uh, what else? Oh, someone said take the Volvo. Again, the Volvo's too big. It just physically won't fit on the stand, which is a real pain. Um, da -da -da -da. <laughs> Herb York. Um, Good afternoon, everyone. I think I'll change the orange oil on my Volvo later when it's still sunny and warm. Yeah, it's actually really warm in this car now. I've come out here because there's lots of noise in the house. And it was really chilly when I first um, came out here. Now it's boiling right in the sunshine. Yeah, Hippo is... Hippo is in many ways the ideal choice, but the thing about a Mark 1 Freelander is that there's still quite a lot of them around. So people kind of don't necessarily 
recognise it as a, a classic yet, even though it is 25 years old since it's been out on the market. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's frightening how long that's been around. Um, I always say that a few people are commenting here and they've got their names in different colour and they've got a little logo next to their name. That's because they are channel members. They are people who uh, have, have found it in their hearts to support the channel and the the, the work saving these, these poor maltreated cars that you see around you. <laughs> um, it's like a subscription to a, like a Discovery or you know Netflix something, but, but cheaper and better value, I think. You get to do or, or like a rescue dog kind of thing. <laughs> There's a description in the link below or other way around possibly, link in the description below. Uh, convince Ian to try to take Twok, and you can take any car you like. That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> I might start putting the pressure on him tonight. I'll give him a quick phone call. Ian, yeah, take, take Twok. You know you want to. Then I can take the Volvo 740. <laughs> Get Discovery Channel on board and take the Classic Mini. Yeah, we did actually talk about bringing the Classic Mini because that would be a really cool display piece. Um, but the thing about that is we would then need to have a... Again, I have a second car, support car, taking me as well, but I could just drive myself in that. The thing is, because it's got no wheels, it's actually a bit of a pain to move around. You need for four people lifting the shell onto a trailer. So it's a bit of a, a, a hassle. Actually, the tea uh, is not actually cold yet. It's still surprisingly hot. I only made it just, literally just came out, and it's... How long have we been on for now? Uh, been on for 11 minutes, so yeah, tea, tea in these uh, furious driving mugs does stay warm a long time. Plug. <laughs> Oh, another more Volvo work. Off to change the throttle cable on a Volvo S70, says Robert. Should be an easy job, but things can always go hobnut. Yes, indeed they can. <laughs> so I'm skimming through the comments now. I'm on a different device. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, Robert says, I'd love to go and see the NEC Classic, but the 235 euro plane ticket from Schlippel to Birmingham is putting you off a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit steep. A Euroton, a Euroton train through London and then a train up to Birmingham. Is that even more expensive? I suspect it might be. Oh, someone says take the VI. Oh, take the Volvo. Yeah, take your boat. Yeah, lots of interesting choices. Can you imagine the dilemma I'm having here right now? Because there's so, so many cars. I mean, I could do a car show on my own here, really, couldn't I? Um, but yeah, I would love to take that. And, um, well, I don't know, take it, all of them, really. Oh, uh, Paulie says, any uh, Rover 420 GSI updates? And the answer is no, because um, the, the paint shop I've gone to is very, very old school indeed, in that they don't answer the phone or email, so you have to go there in person. And um, when you do go there, they're very they're friendly and nice, but, you know, if, if there's no progress, there's no progress. So I've not been down there for a few weeks, and I'm assuming they'll phone me when it's done. Um, but I did try and slide in the other day and it was in like a storage unit elsewhere um so no news at that particular time that's because their prices are so good and the work is so good they are always incredibly busy so um it's not a place you you rush to if you're in a hurry to get your car back in a, in a couple of days but once they have finished with the 420 i am going to take the punto down there and get that rear quarter sorted out on the punto um there's a few mother marks and they just paint that whole rear quarter and make the whole thing look fabulous once that one's done then the 200 vi can go down there and um get get its rear um, it's the same corner actually, uh, but the Punto has gone rusty and I don't want it to fail its next MOT so it can go and get it, that done before the next MOT. And the Rover is not an MOT issue, it's just untidy. But the thing is, the, the 200 VI actually needs a complete paint job. It needs every. I thought when I first saw it, it just needed a couple of marks around the rear driver's side wheel arch and it needed something else doing somewhere else. As I looked around it, every panel has either been repainted professionally but not brilliantly at home or been scratched so the entire car needs to be taken back and redone properly so that's another big job to make that car as perfect as it deserves to be anyway let's look at the comments again oh uh da -da 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 -da. i need to get my car mot'd ready for the nec so steve's machines uh steve's rich land rover level on the, on the channel membership um well, Bob, I'm crying over the 75. I am as well. Oh, I love this car. It's just so, so nice. But the thing is, I've got two other projects that I've agreed to buy because I think it'd be great for the for the channel and also because the cars I would quite like to, to experience. And as you can see, I'm completely out of space. Um, so something's got to give. And this car is worth enough to pay for both of those projects and big enough to take the space of two projects as well. So this is the thing, I can't fit this car in the barn. 
So come winter time, this car is going to be sat outside here in the way, or just on the street somewhere, and that's not great. So yeah, it's a real, real sad day to part with it, but it is lovely. Uh, Steve says, take the Volvo, I need inspiration to finish yours. Um, well, unfortunately, it's too, I just might miss this bit of, it's too big. <laughs> the stand, we've, we've kind of measured it, and we've measured the cars, and we're kind of stuck with a medium-sized car. So, so as we said before, Alpha 145, Rover 200 VI are kind of optimum size for internal space in the car and external space on the stand. Hippo the Freelander is a potential that it might might squeeze on. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I might have a word with um, Ian and Steph, see what they think, because Hippo would be quite interesting. But the Alpha, as I said, would be the only Alpha 145 at the NEC. Like a thousand cars and it's the only one, and that would be quite cool. Uh, Don Baker, yeah, Dan, sorry, not Don. Um, did, 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 have I got the garage door sorted? Yeah, that was the big news I opened the, the, uh, the video with, yes. My dad came around yesterday and together we fixed the garage door. It now goes up and down. I can get my jacks out again so I can take the Crown Vic off the axle stands. So yeah, to, if the weather stays warm this afternoon, I'll um, grind a bit of the old under seal off the car, put some fresh uh, chassis black and under seal on there. And actually, now before I do that, I do need to uh, paint the outer seal. I need to go pop down to Kent Paints and see if they can mix me up some aspen green. I've got the American paint codes and I've got a few other alternate paint codes. So hopefully they'll be able to mix up a, an aerosol spray can of that. Um, and then I can just paint that area and then I can do the under sealing because I don't want to be doing under sealing then painting because paint doesn't stick when it's under sealing. Um, Take the Crown Vic. Yeah, I, I've had a big enough trailer. <laughs> Sorry, Edward, it's going to be not finished and too big. Uh, Paulie says, which Crown Vic did I fancy out of that large collection American? I don't know if you've seen this video, but it's on some other channel on YouTube. There's a guy in America who's been collecting Crown Vic's like, amazing, immaculate, low-mileage cars, often for under 10,000 miles, mostly under 20,000 miles. They're all seen service, but such ridiculously limited service. It's ridiculous. And a lot of them are sort of post-2008 to 2011, 12. Very, very late cars as well. Uh, it would be hard to pick. I would go for another dark colour one. There was a couple with um, dark, basically my dream for Crown Vic, dark colour paint, the spot lamps on the A-posts and the nudge bar on the front. Perfect. And low mileage. Yeah. <laughs> Too many to choose from. Dashcam Serbia. Hi, how you doing? Always add... <laughs> oh, this is Stefan. We can always add up and down to our group. Then we can have classic furious hub up. <laughs> Well, we ought to do that, really, shouldn't we? Next time we go and get a bigger stand and get him along. How about Rover, Coup Rover Coupe? Uh, I've, so, this is, so people are jumping in after I've asked, answered some of these already. Uh, Rover Coupe uh, would be a great car to take up there, but it's not big enough to fit all the stuff I'm going to be taking up there in. And secondly, um, there's a Rover Coupe club stand, and I want to try and do something where there's not too many of the same car that I'm taking up there, just so people have got something different to look at. As an alcoholic, Dave, David Mill, he's very keen. Oh, he's got a heart on the choice of the... Oh, no, it's not me. Uh, it's the thought of the Alpha is a good thing. Edward, sell the Punto. No, the Punto is lovely. I took the Punto out the other night, um, just because I haven't driven it for a bit. Brought it back from the barn, left um, the Freelander in the barn, and uh, took the uh, Punto up to the gym. And it's like a nice night. You know, you haven't driven the Punto for a bit, take it out for a little drive around the country lanes. It was lovely. Came out of the gym like an hour and a half later, and the rain was just insane i've not seen anything like it for a long time and i actually got soaked literally every piece of my clothing was soaked as i got into the car and i thought well, this is a perfect night to take a car with no air conditioning <laughs> and to demiss me and a dodgy fan selector uh, but yeah it did fine it got us back all right good old punto little skinny tires for the win there was like some aquaplaney bits which i think might have been been trickier in a car with thicker tires Uh, John McDonald, coking from Ireland? Uh, was it checking from Ireland? I'm not sure. Uh, flight and um, the Moxie Hotel, which is up at the NEC, 270 euros. Wow, so he's getting flight and hotel for 270, and uh, going from, from Schlippel was 235 from flight only. Wow. Uh, question here Mondeo. ST24 V6 or 75 2.46. That's not really a fair comparison. That's more of an MG ZT V6 versus the ST24 because the 75 is a completely different car. That really comes down to whether you want the comfy ride because the V6 75s 
they're lovely and comfy, they're rapid, but they don't have that fast feel. They might actually go for Mondeo, but it would definitely break. Edward, hi, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. How are you? Ha! <laughs> the feel behind the carriage would be ideal for storage. It would, actually, yeah. It does give it damp, but I could probably pave it. And then where would the chickens go? Yeah, Steve says, yeah, take Hippo, sleep in the roof tent. That thought had crossed my mind. I did wonder how thoroughly they check any of the camping type stuff at the show, because I've seen people with camper vans up there before, and often wondered, you know, could you could you just yeah, stay there? Just don't leave. Because <laughs> you are stuck there for the night, and if you need the loo, you're going to be, you know, using a bottle or something. Good afternoon, Jason. Hello, how are you? Right, so what else have we got going on here? Whoa. So back into the comments. Oh, well, Bob's gone. Take the Crown Vic. Crown Vic's broken. Oh, and it says, have I ever had a drive in a Renault Twingo RS? Do you know what? I have not. No, that would be an interesting thing. If someone's got one, drop me an email, because that would be quite fun. How much should take Ellie the 2CV? He took that one last year, and I think he's a bit like me. He likes to take something different every time, so... A car that's not been featured before. And um, we did want to take Ellie and the Bolingo last year because we were camping in, in Bob the um, the camper thing. Um, but the stand was actually a lot smaller when we got there than we thought it was going to be. <laughs> Get Discovery Channel on board. Oh no, I've heard that already. Uh, greetings from Scotland. Hello, Ian Stewart. How are you? Uh, hire a car. What? To take hire a classic, because it's a classic car hire place, car hire place, and uh, turn up at the NEC with a rental. That'd be an entertaining one. Hello from Ellesmere, Ellesmere Port, sunny Vauxhall land. That's where they make the vans, isn't it? And Astras. Uh, son of a witch, yeah. So you need to take something that's not too big for the stand and not too small for carrying. Yeah, that's my dilemma. So yeah, it rules out the Punto and the Mini because they're too small to carry, and a lot of the bigger cars because they're too big. Uh, have I driven Mr. Lloyd's S40 yet? No, he was going to come down this week, um, and I was going to have a look at it then. But unfortunately, something came up at uh, his end, and he, we've had to, to delay. But I might be going down to Southampton area before too long, so one way or another, I'll go and have a, a poke at it very soon. If I had to reduce my... This is Jason. If I had to reduce my fleet to five cars, what would I keep? Oh, that's a toughie. Um, the Rover 2000, that was always staying. Uh, Mini Cooper, because that's just such a cool original car. The Crown Vic, because that's awesome. Hmm. Gets difficult after then. Tomcat, maybe? Tomcat's been around for a long time. I really like that one. Hmm. Then it comes down to... I like the 200 VI. The Alpha 145 I really, really like. But it's really handy having a four-wheel driver like Hippo because we do camping and dirty stuff. Can we have six? I'll take the 145 and the Freelander. But the Freelander is kind of optional to flip it into something different, like a Defender or something, or a Discovery, or a G-Wagon, if I won the lottery. <laughs> yeah, that's a question I don't like. Any more questions? Have I got that red rancho from Son of Witch? Uh, I haven't got the toy of it. No, I never had a toy rancho, bizarrely. Oh, did I? No, I don't think I did. Um, that is the same car that I drove, um, that uh, Ian drove, because there are only two on the road. And the owner of that red one is um, he's, he's quite sort of active in the, the club scene and stuff, so it's a well-known car. Um, no, it's an interesting car. Like, like everyone in the world, or in the UK, who grew up between the 80s or late 70s and the mid-90s, I had a teacher with one at my secondary school. It always looked, looked really interesting and odd. Uh, <laughs> any updates on the P6V8? Yes, there is news coming, but I'm not going to spoil it now. Would I buy Hubsnut's Giselle? Very reliable car. Uh, as if we're selling it soon, by the sound of it. Um, I don't know, I've never owned a Citroen, but I'm not sure that's the Citroen I'd want to go for. I mean, I know it's an obvious thing, but I would love to go for a DS or an ID, probably a DS. And controversially, and I'm not mass, I'm not massively in favour of electrifying classic cars, but I'm not also massively against it either. I think it comes down to a case-by-case -case basis, because some cars, the engine 
is very much a car of that personality. And so you, if you swapped out the engine from an Alpha with a twin spark in it, uh, or, or the old um, Alpha twin cam, like a, you know, any of the 60s, 70s Alphas, or anything, that's a lot of the Rover V8 things, then that kind of spoils it, because you've lost a big element. The noise and the power delivery is a big part of that car's character. However, the Citroen DS, apart from being utterly beautiful, incredibly futuristic, it was... In, well, not just my opinion, but a lot of people's opinions, very much hampered by the fact that the engine was terrible. It was really underpowered for what it was. It needed a six-cylinder, and it just needed more grunt. And it wasn't a particularly characterful engine either. And the gearbox is kind of weird. So on that particular car, I don't think I'd have any problem with, uh, with the EV swapping a, a Citroen DS, and then it would become really futuristic as it was kind of intended because it was meant to be just weird and silent and, and mad and from just dropped out of space. And if you watch the movie Gattaca... All the, uh, the, the the cars in that movie were classics that have been dubbed over with electric car sounds, including a lot of Citroen DSs. So I think that would be really cool. Yeah, back to the comments. Oh, Paulie, I'd love a late model CX 2.5 GTI. Oh, yeah, Turbo 2, yes. So many words, but yes. <laughs> That's really cool. Doesn't someone that I know have an SM, but he doesn't like to mention it? There is someone, but I can't think who, because he never talks about it. So I, it just slipped my mind who's got an SM. Derry, quick hello back. What's the next car to join the fleet, says Edward? Well, you know, I can't say, just in case it doesn't come off. But um, yeah, there's actually two cars waiting in the wings, but they're not here yet because all the money in the world is tied up in this thing here, which sadly... Unless I sold both the Freelander and 200VI, then I could go and do these quick flips. But I really like 200VI, and the Freelander is really handy, especially as winter's coming up. It's never the right time, is there? Never the right time. Put the roof tent on the Tomcat. That would be entertaining, yeah. Bizarrely, because I've got uh, a roof rack that a viewer gave me for the 420 GSI Tourer, and it would not fit onto the 420. I could not make it go at all, I don't know why. And I've not tried it yet, but the actual instruction book that came in the box labelled 400 Tourer uh, has got a picture of a, a coupe in it. So it's very possible I actually could fit the roof tent to the coupe, which would be interesting camping. Would I ever consider a series Land Rover? Oh, 100%. I love a series Land Rover. And long before I started the channel, I was planning to buy a series Land Rover. Back when I only had like two or three cars, um, it was yeah something I really really wanted to get hold of, but I've never managed to to bite the bullet on those. Um, it wouldn't be massively practical, but um, a lot of these things aren't. Uh, I mean, kind of the the four wheel drive corner of this collection is now filled by the Freelander, and thanks to the tent, it's kind of been forced into like a family camping role. So we kind of need to go down a Defender Discovery. Um, I don't know, like a I don't want to say five what's called the X5 or Mercedes equivalent, but some other kind of proper thing. Anyway, um, yeah, but no, I'd love a Series Land Rover. If any, I mean, the Series 1 would be like, the dream, but those are just silly money now. Like a Series 3 would be really good. Like a 1970s one that's tax-free, just needs to be MOT'd for insurance and safety reasons, not because, you know. Anyway, yeah, get another 156. Uh, one five with a six-speed diesel. That's literally what I had first time around, and yes, I would love another one. Really, really, actually, I very much like another one. Um, would I consider a 90s Volkswagen like a Corrado VR6 Storm? Do you know what? I hadn't thought of one, but yeah. Yeah, I would actually quite enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> what car do I regret selling most in the past? Uh, immediately going back to the Alpha 156 6 speed 2.4. <laughs> that is a beautiful car. Wish I hadn't sold it. Only got 1700 quid as a part exchange from an Alpha main dealer. If I'd had another £2,000 in my bank account, I would have kept it, but I didn't, so big regret. And uh, I know it went up, on the part exchange, went up to Stratford upon eight. no, not Stratford, further north than that, went north anyway, and uh, lived up there for a bit. Then a friend of mine from back down here in Kent bought it and ran it for a bit, and he offered it to me when he sold it, incredibly. Like about two years later, it had only had about 6,000 miles, and all the dents had been taken out of it, but it hadn't been serviced in that whole entire time. Um, and he offered it for me for sale, and I didn't take it, and I really regret that, because that car's gone now. But that, that one is one I re really seriously regret. I had an E30, which I kind of wish i kept. I had a classic Range Rover, which passed me, which I kept, but that particular one was... It was a G-Rage Vogue 3.5. was it, 3.9? But it was, yeah, 
it was always breaking. The windows would not work. The ABS kept breaking. Um, the aircon never worked properly. And I think a gasket was failing on it. So it went back on eBay. An £800 Range Rover, you get what you pay for. Um, Alpha 33, kind of wish I'd kept that one. That was quite cool as well. Uh, so too many cars. Uh, did, I, did I watch Seaside Garage's Mercedes S123? Oh no, I didn't know. This is from Porsche 356A. Um, it must have made you feel that your 123 isn't that bad at all. From Steve Sidney. Uh, no, do you know what? I haven't seen that. I'll, I'll dig that video out after I've finished watching this. I will go and have a watch of that because that sounds like the kind of motivation I need. Oh yes, uh, someone's just commented, Rover P6 in the Gattaca 2. Yeah, the Rover P6 black P6 V8. It's not a spec. Got all the police cars with uh, moon discs and green headlights in Gattaca. That's a great film. If you've not seen Gattaca, Gattaca, go and look that out. Uma Thurman, Ethan Hawke, Jude Law. Really, really good film. Um, do, 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 do. How's the white P6? Do you know what? It's, it's absolutely fine. It's safe. The problem is it's, it's fine and safe in a garage with nothing else. So it kind of gets ignored. And I was thinking maybe I'd go and have a look at it in the next couple of days. The starter motor wiring is duff, so I can't crank it. It gets really hot to the point that I'm a bit worried it's going to catch fire when I'm trying to start it. Um, and that's really why I'm not driving it around. <laughs> that's basically it. Uh, do, do, do. Going back to the comments again. I need a second person to go and read the comments and, and point out. What about auto shenanigans Nissan Skyline? Would you like to go in it when he gets it back on the road? Or is Saab 9.3? Oh, I didn't know you got a Skyline. Uh, yeah, I love Skylines. The fastest I've ever driven is in a, in a Skyline, but it was the, the late 30, 35 version. 180 miles now, by the way. Um, yeah, I would look, very much like a go in there. And also Saab 9.3. I like Saabs, but I've done Saab 9.3s already, unfortunately. Uh, uh, someone's replying to Edward. Oh, have I driven, uh, going back to previous comment, have I watched him once driven for Ever Smitten? Yes, Dougie. Yeah, I like Dougie a lot. I managed to miss him at the Festival of the Unexceptional. He was down there roaming around with a camera, and, uh, yeah, we must have missed each other completely. Back in the old days, when I was doing, like, full-time nothing but magazine photography, Dougie was the editor on a car magazine, about Vauxhall's, funnily enough, and I used to sort of do jobs for him. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I do, do know Dougie a bit, and, yeah... I do like his videos as well. It's quite, quite an entertaining watch. Watch Driven for Ever Smitten. Uh, Steve's Machines. Poor Merck Estate. That was rotten. Oh, man, okay. Sorry, he's got to go, but nice to... Thanks for dropping by, Steve. Um, do you think you need a bigger barn uh, so you can have all your cars in the same location? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I mean, about a week after I moved in, I knew I needed a bigger barn. Um, partly because the shape of it makes it really, really hard to, to squeeze cars in. That shape also means it's nigh on impossible to put a four post lift of any kind in there uh, without sort of ruining the access to most of the space so you lose more car space than you gained by putting a lift in there uh, i did consider getting one of those little mobile ones but then that's kind of tricky as well uh, and the, the turn in makes it really hard so yeah it's very much at capacity and it's very much too small if i if i could find somewhere bigger then yeah i mean my best option might be to get another small one i have two small units to shuffle things in between but no i'd love to go and get a bigger bigger unit somewhere else that would be just so so good uh da, 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 da. nice hat this is actually uh a trial hat that i got from the place that does my t-shirts and things and um, weirdly this logo they sent me a, an approval thing for the logo and i thought well that's funny but they've already got the logos approved and it came through with this one being much smaller than the regular hat size logo. Hang on. The one, whoops. I can Drop my tea on the floor. Back of the car. Yeah, this is the regular size logo. And this is a bit smaller. I didn't realise it had been chosen as a, a littler thing. Um, but yeah, I was trying to find a different shape of hat because there's a particular hat I've got which sits a particular way on my head and I really like it. I've not better find it. not been able to kind of replicate it in the options of the hats that are available over on the, uh, the, the merchandise shop where they do all the printing and stuff. So I've got this one as a sample. And it's, it's not bad, actually, but it's still not 100% right. So I don't know if I can get like a one of each of all the different hats and, <laughs> and finally figure out which one it is. Uh, Paul says, a 124-300D wagon would be a great, especially 
tune to Monstrous Horseback? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely would. I, I really like the W124s, especially the wagons. Um, yeah, and they have the formatic of that as well, which is really unusual. Trouble is, with the 124s, they're at that, that particular age where they're not old enough to qualify for sort of the free tax, free road tax, so they're quite expensive to put on the road. And also, they're not old enough to be um, old enough or new enough to be ULAs exempt because I live quite close to the low emission zone for London and so I have to pop in and out of it because it covers parts of Kent now it covers acres, hundreds of acres of countryside in this low emission zone it's ridiculous and I pop in and out of it quite frequently and anything needs to be the sort of post 2004-ish give or take um, or older than 40 years and those one two fours are fabulous cars but they don't fall into that zone but you know I really like one though especially a formatic estate oh yeah would I buy a Cavalier? Do you know what? I do like a Cavalier a lot. Yeah. Um, I've driven quite a few of them. Uh, Mark IIs and Mark Threes are kind of some of my favourite modern classics. I nearly swapped the Tomcat for a Cavalier at one point a little while ago. <laughs> Might have done me a favour by a few problems if I had. Um, no, I really like them. Um, I certainly wouldn't rule one out. <laughs> Dan, Danny, Danny Baker from the radio. Um, bigger barn needs to buy the farm. To be fair, yes, that wouldn't hurt. Buy you next door to Hubcat. Hubnut. Hubcut? He's vicious. He goes out with a blade. Um, yeah, that'd be pretty quite good value, but it's a bit of a commute from, from here to the far side of Wales. Uh, have I seen uh, Maximus Iron Thumper? Does Land Rover Restoration with his granddad? No, I don't know that one. There's another one to add to the list of things to watch. I'll have to go back to his comments later on. I hope they're still going to be saved. I'll screenshot that. Um, I'll go back and find another comment. I'll screenshot them because I think the, the, the chat disappears. Seaside Garage. Yeah, I'll screenshot both of those so I can come back to them. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Darren says, Could or would I get all your cars in one place to have a meet the fleet social? Definitely bring one. You've got as many cars as me almost, Darren. Um, <laughs> Do you know, I've kind of thought about that before. Um, it's kind of a difficult one to try and work out A, where and B, how. Because currently there are 15 cars on the fleet. And so that is a fair amount of logistics. I probably spent the day before shuffling back and forth. So it couldn't be too far from home. And it would need to be big because already I'm filling bigger than a lot of car parks. A lot of pub car parks um, wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't be big enough to accommodate me on my own, never mind anyone coming to visit. So it'd have to be like a field somewhere, and unless I'm not too far from here, and also somewhere that doesn't mind me sort of loading up all the cars probably the day before and taking up a lot of space and secure enough to leave the cars there overnight. And also a few of them are non-runners, so we'd have to look at trailering. But no, it's, it's an interesting idea and something I would actually quite like to, to make happen. But yeah, yeah, um, I would like to, trying to work out how, that's the problem. <laughs> Somewhere like, I don't know, start thinking out loud now. The, this is, uh, t to Darren specifically, the place you brought your, um, your Vauxhall down the other day, that place would be big enough, but they charge parking for more than a couple of hours. So that could be quite expensive with all the cars being coming and going. Um, there's a, a place near here called the Friary which is like an actual old school monastery. And they do Kent's classic car show there and the All Ford show there. And they've got lots and lots of fields. I wonder if they could be approached. Anyway, sorry, I'm talking, I'm doing off-camera um, logistics on camera at the moment, so we'll come back to that. Um, there's another moving in time with Justin Timberlake and Amanda Seyfried, where they drive and crash an electric converted Series 1 E-Type chased by an electric Dodge Charger. Oh, I've done another one in time. A screenshot. Um, I'm, I'm assuming those are regular cars that they just dubbed the audio like in Gattaca. I'll have to dig that one out. Grim Wriggler, I just bought a W124. Oh, good choice. Which one did you get? Uh, Stephen says, when this live's done, are we watching John of Auto Shenanigans, the new Secrets of the Motorway episode that's just uploaded? Uh, I have seen some of them. They're quite entertaining, aren't they? Um, a lot of sort of information-packed stuff. I do love a bit of trivia. Physics Airline, hello from Australia and hello from the UK. Back to you. Any of you on the Mark II Ford Puma? By that, do you mean the modern SUV thing? Well, I did review one and I was surprised how good a driver it actually was. I mean, it's not as good as the original, let's be honest. But as modern 
weird, ugly crossover things go, it does drive very well. And it is kind of practical, but I don't love it. But it does drive okay. But I'd much rather have an original given the choice. Max says, I've taken a brave task recently that will give you a scary case of deja vu. But of 214 Cabriolet, only 190,000 on the clock. Just run in. <laughs> is it solid? Does everything work? We need pictures. Uh, Gavin Davis and I hated you when I was back home in the UK for a visit. That and the mega low new speed. Oh, the mega new speed limit things. I've done 20 mile an hour speed limits in London before, and they're an absolute number. You're driving down a deserted road, and you can see for a mile ahead of you, there's nothing in front of you. The pavements are deserted. There's no one around, and you're sitting there at 20 miles an hour in case there's a camera. It's just ridiculous. And I had to go to Wales a week or so ago. Um, didn't get to see you, and I was in and out in a day. It was like a 550 mile round trip to do two photo shoots in, in under 24 hours. Yeah, and miles of 20 mile an hour. And it's very confusing because there are still areas that are posted 30 miles an hour, even though the news was saying that everything that previously been posted 30 was now 20. There's still 30 mile an hour postings, and it was unclear as if, well, is this a 30 that hasn't become a 20, or is this one they just haven't got into changing yet? And so you don't know what you should be doing in those areas, which is irritating for one thing. And secondly, a lot of the time, you're driving, you drive through the village and there's all houses and stuff, and you think, okay, fair enough, they've made this bit a 20 because it's built up and there'll be kids and stuff but then you get to fields on both sides of the road and there's nothing around and you're still doing 20 and so this is this is ridiculous and they say it only takes, adds a minute or two to your journey but it added over 20 minutes to the last section of our journey when we from joining the 20 mile area to our destination it was a good 20 extra minutes on our journey so it's 40 minutes out of, including coming out again that's you know three quarters of an hour almost wasted just on a day when you could do without being exhausted at the wheel anyway any updates on the mate's mustard yellow mercedes no there isn't actually no i need to chase them about that we we got a set of falcon tires for it because those were rotten and so it needs new tires falcon um same as we've got on the 200 vi i think same same zeans falcon falcon zeans uh those are fitted to it we got the sunroof sort of semi not leaking it runs. He had to replace a couple of pipes in the engine he couldn't find. He got a welder fabricator person to make up a couple of metal pipes for him. I think it's, it's kind of just needs an MOT, really. I don't know why he hasn't got an MOT. I think he just doesn't want to pay for the insurance to get on the road. Come on, sort it out, Barry. Need to go for a drive. Paulie says, I saw a Carlton 3-litre injection diamond estate last week on an L plate. What's that, 1993? Yeah, wow. I forgot what handsome estate car they are. Yeah, they were beautiful, yeah. Really, really nice, good-looking cars. I saw a clip of that, was it, oh, God, World Is Not Enough, where they have the radio control um, BMW in the car park, and there was a, a Senator R. Carlton that one of the bad guys had. That looked really good, too. Favourite car movie? Oh, movie car. Kit from Knight Rider, yeah. Can't go wrong with that one. Always very cool. You can't be far from Salvage Rebels UK. Rob and Chris, do I watch them? Uh, not too far, no. They're in North Kent, up in... Uh, uh, sort of the other end of the county somewhere so not too far away um but yeah no I, I do watch them i don't know them though i know people who know them if that makes sense uh, second hand knowing but i'd love to go and meet them and say hello um but yeah i do watch them they're, they're quite entertaining uh da, 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 da. grim regular oh it's a 1993 300d oh nice is that a manual then being a 300d or an auto what color as well ian did a video on welsh speed limits yeah i know he he did, yeah, but all his cars only go 20 miles an hour anyway, so it doesn't really affect him. <laughs> Harsh, sorry. Oh, I'm not sure. Hang on, I've, I've lost track. Oh, hang on. It's a weird car, French market car, but purchased in the UK for the owner to travel to and from his second home in France. Completely rot free, covered in dents, yellow headlamps. Hang on, Max, that was the... Oh no, Grim Riggler bought the 124. John Bushell says, morning, I skimmed past it. I said John Belushi was talking to us from beyond the grave. Salvage rebuilds might fix the Crown Vic for me. They tend not to get involved in welding, do they? They, they, they prefer to do like just pulling out dents and mechanical stuff. Bob is the fastest vehicle on the hub in that fleet. Oh, that's harsh. That's harsh. <laughs> T 
Tomorrow Never Dies, yeah, uh, BMW 750. I saw a Fiat Seicento yesterday, beautiful shit. Yeah, Seicentos are lovely little cars. You don't really see them around much anymore, though, do you? Oh, Max, sorry, he had the, uh, the Rover, yeah, the, the convertible. Sorry, I'll, there's too many threads going on, so I'm trying to, trying to keep track of. First R8 I've had, but I'm loving it. Getting used to the left-hand driver's odd, though. Yeah, it would be strange, actually, but yeah. Not too hard, though. And my wife used to have a, um, a Barquetta, and that was left-hand drive. And she said she found it easier to get used to left-hand drive than she did to coming back to right-hand drive car when she sold it. And that's another car I wish we kept. Really do wish we kept the Barquetta. Oh, and Max says, trying to get more R8 parts for um, DG MRS. Uh, yeah, 45 strap braces for the rear, 25 on the front. It takes a lot of scuttle shake out. Yeah, that would be a big improvement. If I sold all the cars in the fleet to buy one big car, what would I buy? That's a difficult choice. Um, hmm. So I'd probably have about 50, 60,000 pounds or so, give or take. Um, and the ones I would really, really like to get, there's like a short list of cars, it's only about 50 or so long. A 1970s Alpha GTV, or GT, you know, the, the coupe one. Uh, that would be lovely. They're a lot of money now, though. Or an original Range Rover. Those are really nice. Too many nice cars out there. Obviously, like a 911, a classic 911. It's a funny thing. People kind of uh, sneer down on the 911s for being too common and too popular. But the thing is... They're popular for a reason. And if you've not driven a classic 911, it's kind of hard to say what... It's like Alphas. You can't really explain why Alphas are so nice, but once you drive one, you know. Same with classic 911s. So yeah, that would be quite fun to have. Sorry, it's getting really warm in it now. Really, really warm. I don't know why I borrowed... shouldn't have worn a jumper. Don't forget to push the like and check out the Smashing the Pistons. Oh, another channel. Uh, but yeah, don't forget to hit like and indeed subscribe. Are we going to see the Black Rover V8 back on the channel? Yes, we are. Have you done a review on a Lexus GS300 first gen, like the one in my profile picture, which is a track car long gone now? Oh, okay, yeah. No, I've never done any Lexuses. At all. I've done some modern Lexuses, but not old original Lexuses. I say old, they're like 1990s, aren't they? Um, yeah, no. I would like to, because they're... Well, they were, they were designed, basically, they, they took a, a Mercedes and, and worked out what made it good and what could be improved and improved it. They're, they're incredible cars. And, and uh, until very recently, I'm sure there are still some running around now, you'd see them just driving around looking like new at uh, 30 years old and the perfect cars. They never break. Um, whoop. Grim regular manual always. Good man. Uh, view on an... Ah, oh, says Stefan. Uh, I think I missed the bit before that. Renault Avon Time. I love a Renault Avon Time. You've seen the, the the review I did of one of them. That was fantastic. Such a weird, brilliant thing. Paint shimmy pink. <laughs> well, I suppose it's Miss Hubnut's car, but it's a bit Barbie. Lexus is all Lexi. It's got to be Lexi, hasn't it? The, the, the screen with the comments is down to the left, which is why I'm sort of ducking off the camera every now and then. Uh, I can't read this. Buko123, have you watched them? Uh, no. I don't know that one. Darren, finally I'm watching this in the most recent car you featured. Oh, right. <laughs> Open the door at exactly the same moments to keep cool. That's weird. Yeah. Whew, God, it's too warm. The electric bike is the fastest car on the Hubcat fleet. There's an argument going on in the comments now about what's which of the very slow vehicles is the fastest of Ian's cars. Um, I'm still saying I'm still agreeing with Bob. Bob downhill will be uh, be very rapid indeed. All right, so in case people are joining, we've still got about 100 or so people watching, and we're nearly an hour in. Uh, we open with this to say yes. Ian, Steph and I are going to be back together at the NEC in November in just a couple of weeks' time. Um, hall 3A, it says on the map, but it might actually be Hall 3 and they've cut the bottom of the map off. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll be there. We're going to be um, yeah, trying to sell a few hats and mugs and things to pay for our fuel home. Um, Steph has announced she's taking Tina and the Marina. I'm still undecided. I would very much like um, to take the Alpha 145. 
um, because that's just going to be really interesting and unusual. Um, but yeah, that, that's not actually working at the moment. So <laughs> we might take the 200 VI or we might take the Freelander. So who knows? It's still very much up in the air. Amazing how cold it gets. And now the argument has gone to what's the fastest thing on the Furious fleet? Hello, Sid. Um, yeah, question is, yeah, someone's saying the 200 VI. Now it's going to come down to... Hmm. The Crown Vic is actually very fast, um, believe it or not, for a, such a big big shed on wheels. Those will do about 120, 130, give or take. 200 VI is around 130. The Alpha 145, I think, is actually a tiny bit quicker. That's about 135 as well, in, in theory, obviously. The Crown... Um, not the Crown Vic, the... For, uh, the Coupe, that's a pretty rapid car as well. That's, again, around 125, 130. I mean, no idea what the 4.6 P6 is going to do, because that's that could be ridiculously fast. I mean, in reality, using if you include the modern car, the the C250 CDI AMG Premium Plus Formatic is the actual fastest car. It's actually limited to about 155. Um, but in terms of fun cars, yeah, it's going to come down to the 200 Vi or the um, or the Alpha 145. I think. You do a race one day. Santa Pod, anyone? Alan, looking forward to seeing the NEC. Yeah, me too. Yeah, we were an entertaining show. Am I brave enough to spend the night in Bob? I did. Uh, last NEC show, me and Ian, last November, we had the, sh- the, the stand, just the two of us, and we, we kind of left organising stuff a bit late, and we couldn't get a hotel, so we, we stayed in Bob. It's, it's great, because each end opens up into a separate double bedroom, effectively. It's actually really very comfortable. Um, it, not not as chilly as I thought it would be, because it's double walled and very comfy mattresses built into the thing. It's actually very pleasant indeed. Um, trouble was that we were half an hour from the NEC, so we had very early starts to get out of there in the morning. Anyway, 4.6 is very silly in the ZT. Yes, it is, because it's loads of power and not quick enough. You need to supercharge it, then it's less silly. Uh, take Sinclair C5 in the boot. That is an option. That is actually an option. What was that when you were both running about in the... Hang on. Was that... Hang on, I'm going to go back a bit. Oh, when we were running about in the cool Fiat. Yes, sorry, yes, I've misunderstood that. Max says, was that when we were both running about in that cool Fiat? Yeah, the Fiat Marea weekend, which we borrowed from um, Also Driven slash Mortals and Motors. Uh, that really is a very fun car. And bizarrely, I then bought the Bravo, which is a Marea hatchback. Um... Which car has hurt me physically while, most whilst working on it? Uh, I'll say the V8, because I managed to smack, I think it's my knee or something, uh, when I was assembling the engine, and it hurt for about two weeks. What was my, what was my hand? Some, something really heavy fell on it, and it really, 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 really hurt a lot. Um, yeah, that might be why I messed up putting the engine together, actually. <laughs> I was in pain. Um, yeah. Oh, and uh, when I've been welding the Rover 2000 years ago, I set fire to my own trousers. That was also exciting. So this car I drove was a Range Rover P38 2.5-litre diesel automatic. Yeah, it was very smooth. It sounded great, but yeah, they are slow without weight in them. Max, I think 2.5 KV6s take supercharging quite well. Oh, sorry, there's a... Well, I was put a tent out to dry it, and there's a ground sheet has just disappeared over the fence. Shoved it under a mini. It's probably going to disappear again soon. Yeah, she was helping some scouts, so she had to camp the other day, so uh, her tent is still wet. <sighs> Have I fixed my garage door? Yeah, that was the big big news I opened this video with. I opened, important news, garage door's fixed. Dad came around yesterday and we got that sorted out. It would, yeah, it took some important top level hammering to make it fixed. Borrow a not vehicle. Do you think he's got more than one vehicle that works? <laughs> Slowest car I've ever driven was a 2010 1.2 Polo. Felt genuinely dangerous when you pull out of a roundabout. Yeah, that could actually be quite risky. Shogun Sport. Dan, 
uh, steering box coming down on my shin. Oh, ouch! When I removed the last bolt and when I had the drive shaft bracket from the C Max fall on me. Oh, on my face. Yeah, that hurts. Would I rather have a 2CV or a Diane? says Dylan. Well, that's a good question. I, I like them both. I've not really got a massive preference in the direction. I kind of like the, the purity of the original of the 2CV, but the Diane just looks a bit more fancy, doesn't it? And whatever was cheaper to buy. <laughs> Which dream car has better value? Uh, Supra or Cosworth? Well, that's a good question. Uh, might depend whereabouts you are in the world. Because uh, here in the UK, probably the Cosworth's got more financial value. Well, personally, I think I'll prefer to go for the Supra. Hmm. Would I drive Twook? Yeah, absolutely. I'd drive anything. I've driven a train. <laughs> don't, don't mind. my ambition is to try and drive as many things as possible so yeah 100% definitely yeah um, what's the most favourite colour of a car on your fleet that's a good question um, you know I really like the green of the Crown Vic it's a really unusual colour because it looks black until you get close up to it and then you can't realise it's actually a really dark metallic green it's really nice but also I don't think you can see the, the red of the Punto behind me that's really nice as well um, Fiat did some really good colours in the 90s I think what else we've got in there in the barn of things. Volvo silver is not particularly exciting. The Nightfire, not Nightfire red, uh, the blue of the um, Tomcat is very nice, TT blue. Also the Nightfire red, when the when the Rover 420 comes back from the paint shop, that is going to look really good. But for the moment, the Punto. Punto is a really interesting pinky cat. No, I'm going to go Nightfire. I'm going to go Nightfire red for this 420. Favourite car on Hubbard's Nuts fleet? Oh, man, that's a good question as well. You guys are really sticking out there today. Ah, uh, do you know what? I think probably a Citroen. But I know it's his most problematic car as well. But I do like an interesting, weird car like that. And it's also quite a good car to drive. So it ticks a lot of boxes for the kind of thing I like. It's quite it's quite a cool, good-looking car. It's interesting mechanically and it's fun to drive. And it's really comfortable. Yeah, I'll go with the Citroen. Not the Blingo, the, um, the GSA. <laughs> Be more specific here. That when someone says, oh, I like Matt Rover pin it down yellow yellow i love a yellow car but i haven't got any yellow cars um because the question was which is my favorite on my own fleet if i had a zoe yellow alpha 145 or, or spider then that would be the winner uh, max says the drive the diane is a much better car yeah i think it probably is actually yeah Would I have bought the Rover 45 V6 when Mr. Lloyd sold it? No, it's an automatic, and I have no desire to buy automatics unless I'm very much penned in by other circumstances, like there being no other choices to get that kind of car. Hence why I've got the Crown Victoria with an auto in it, because they only make them with an automatic, and I really wanted a Crown Vic, and why my modern Mercedes is an automatic, because Mercedes quietly stopped selling manual C-classes. And I really wanted another C-Class because they're incredibly reliable and comfortable for long journeys. And I'm over 20,000 miles into that car, and I still don't like the automatic. <laughs> and I'm, every every couple of weeks, or a week or so in fact, I'll be on Auto Trader and I'll be looking at large manual estates because I'm just so not into the automatic on it. And that's a really good one. That's a nine-speed automated manual gubbins. It's apparently very good as automatics go, but... No fun, and it's really slow. Uh, three times this week, it's nearly caught me out. Where the thing I really hate about automatics, apart from the complete lack of involvement and you can't change down into a, a bend, so you can sort of you know, have fun with them, is when you leave junctions and you've got to leave a junction in a hurry because it's like a blind bend or something or a roundabout, and you've got to n nip through traffic. You put your foot down, you wait for it to go, and nothing happens, and it flies out eventually just as traffic starts coming at you. So it's kind of a bit too late, and you should have gone about two seconds previously it's done it to me three times this week and the only way you can get around it is by destroying the gearbox by sort of standing on the brake and standing on the accelerator and then let go of the brake to launch like a drag racer and i really hate that with the manual you can just get going so much quicker and also i had a couple of situations where i've had to do sort of rapid three-point turns because there's stuff going on or just you know just move out of the way because on a tiny lane you need to come backwards and you stop you move it into reverse you hit the accelerator and nothing happens because the car's still going oh you want to go backwards now I hate it, absolutely hate it. Anyway. Du, du, du. Is there a manual conversion available for the Crown Vic? Yes, there is, yeah. Um, 
it's a basically it's a Mustang Mustang six speed. It'll drop straight in there. Um, I don't have to do anything to the engine management, or if it's not quite that complicated. But because it's a 4.6 modular, it's the Mustang engine, and a lot of that car is what well, is Mustang parts bin stuff. There's some Ford's big 4.6 parts bin. So yeah, that would be a, a relatively easy conversion to do. There's lots of fun stuff. There is actually a, an automatic upgrade you can do called the the J something or other, which is basically involves drilling a hole in the gearbox or something, uh, which I'm tempted to try because that does actually liven the gearbox up an awful lot. That is a terrible gearbox. I know people say, oh, you don't like automatics, but you bought the Crown Vic. That's the best part of it. It's really not. It's a terrible gearbox for one thing. It's also the weakest point in the car, apart from the sills. If there's anything mechanical going to break in a Crown Victoria, it's going to be the gearbox. <laughs> so it's the weakest and worst part of the entire car. So anywho, right, where were we? Get to the comments again. Sell the Mercedes WM23. No way, man. That car is brilliant. That is such a lovely car. It's I put so much into that car, and we are so close to the finish line. If it wasn't for the fact that the Crown Vic is currently stranded, because to take the front wing off, because the front wing on the Crown Victoria is also the complete front structure of the side, I've had to take the battery out, so the car is completely stranded there. I can't tow it. I can't push it. It's stuck there until the wing goes back on. Um, so I can't get to the W123 to fix it. So people keep commenting, oh, why have you given up on it, on the comments? I haven't given up on it. I physically can't get to it because the car is so big compared to the garage. I can barely have to sort of breathe in and squeeze down on tippy-toe to get past it. So I can't work on the thing. I can't weld it. I can't push it out. I'm stuck until the Crown Victoria is done. That W123 is going to be really cool. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting that car done. Um, Oh, wow. So, Martin, so complete jump back to what was your biggest injury. Uh, doing a clutch in a Ford Granada, dropped the gearbox on my little finger and took the end off. Ugh. I've got an Amaranth Max. I've got an Amaranth MGF at the moment. Oh, that is a beautiful colour. I love something in Amaranth. I need Amaranth Metros. I saw one at someone's house. I think it's a com an Amaranth Metro convertible at someone's house. I was blown away when I saw that. My hot world, is this live? You tell me. G GSA has many quirks and features. Yes, indeed it does. Is a Nissan 100 NX rare? Yeah, I believe it is. I mean, it's not like mega, mega rare, but I don't think there's very many of them in this country. Um, you, you don't, if you've got an auto trade or eBay right now, you'll probably find one or maybe zero. I have a 205 GTI 1.6, but been offered a swap for a Vauxhall VX220 Turbo with 40,000 miles on it. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be an interesting swap. And I, I couldn't tell you what the value of either car is right now. But the VX220 is brilliant. It's basically a Lotus Elise, but without a lot of the luxury things um, stripped out. And so it's basically a more comfortable Elise, really. I think they're brilliant cars. I would probably go for it myself, but it's whether you want to do it or not, because it's obviously less practical. Two or five, you can you can take stuff with you in the uh, people and stuff. Um Borrow Betty from Hubnut. I'm not sure I could afford the fuel to drive it from Wales and back up to Birmingham. And also, it wouldn't fit on the thing. We have done a video, in case you haven't seen it. There is a video from shortly after we both imported the cars, where we swapped cars and we both took each other's car for a drive to see what we thought of them. That's on there somewhere. Max, thank you here. The benefit of an automatic doesn't outweigh the fun of a manual on a nice road. Always manual, yeah, me too, 100%. Um, that Mercedes, I'm, I'm sitting looking at the, the C250 right now, and it is a beautiful car. It really is a, a lovely bit of styling. But the estates look way better than the saloons, because the saloons look a bit like a kind of slug at the back. The estates look really good. Very, very sort of nice, aggressive, sharp front end. Lots of nice styling details on there. But yeah, I tend not to take it out that much, because I've got the other ones to choose from. And if it's a manual, fun car, even the Punto, I'll take the Punto, because, you know, you can enjoy it more. Um, anyway... E39 540i manual tour would be a great combination. Yeah, yeah, I've only ever seen one for sale in that combo. Mostly they're autos with that V8, but it's a lovely engine, lovely car. That, that is, yeah, ticking a lot of the best of the best boxes just there, if you can find one. Lexus on S200, yeah, got that rare now. I should go to 
Santa Pod and race the Crown Vic against Ian Fairmont. Yeah, that would be actually really quite fun. Um, I don't know which would be the quicker one, to be honest. Uh, he's got the, the straight six and I've got the, the V8. But the, that one, that Crown Vic has got the, the fast differential, the acceleration differential, and it's got the uh, limited slip diff in it as well. So that's built for pursuit, basically, for, for aggressive takeoff. So I suspect that might be the quicker of the two. Uh, do I prefer front or rear-wheel drive cars? Generally prefer rear-wheel drive cars, but there are a lot of very, very fun front-wheel drive cars as well, so I wouldn't rule a car out because of that. But given the choice for a daily, I've gone for the C-Class for the last couple of cars. So, And when I bought the Alpha 159, I went for the four-wheel drive because that one is rear-wheel drive biased instead of front-wheel drive. So, yeah, I prefer rear-wheel drive cars. <laughs> rear-wheel drive or a good four-wheel drive? Because, yeah, actually the current C-Class is a wheel drive as well which is actually a really practical daily. Who needs an SUV when you have a four-wheel drive estate? Um, is it standard... Sorry, Stefan's asking about the Crown Vic. Is it faster than the f standard Ford Crown Victoria and taxi with it being a police interceptor? Yes, the P71 got a number of upgrades, uh, so it made a few more horsepower than the... Um, the civilian and the taxi versions and had different differential options and there were three or four differential choices for the police uh, and that one's got the, the fast one as I say including the limited slip diff and the acceleration um, gears so it's got a really fast takeoff there was a version for the police it didn't have a limited slip diff and it had like a higher final ratio so it was better for high speed cruising um, so if they're doing a lot of highway miles rather than pursuit miles in, yeah, they, they know what the cars are going to do they can get that. But yeah, there, there's about 20 to 30 more horsepower than the standard civilian cars because they've got different intakes, different cams, different engine management. And of course, all the extra coolers and things I mean it can run harder for longer before it starts to overheat and, and lose power as well. So yeah, the, the police interceptors are really interesting. There's a, check my previous videos. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff about it. Just scrapped a year 2003 to Jag S-Type due to a faulty gearbox. So many spares to sort though now. Yeah. Is that a Ford gearbox on the um, Jag S-Type? Because a lot of the, the that, that era of S-Type is basically it's a Ford Thunderbird slash Lincoln LS. So there's a lot of Ford gear. It's a Jaguar engine, but I think there's a lot of Ford stuff under, underneath it. Steph from iDriver Classic is sorting out her marina. A lot of work to do. So Steph, I yeah, a ridiculous amount of, um, of work on that, that marina, but hopefully she'll be able to get it sorted. Please make a video on a Seat Leon FR 1.4 manual. Now, which generation? Do you mean the bubbly kind of egg-shaped one or the, the sharper, creasier one that came after it in about 2015? Do both. What's my dream car? Oh, very difficult choice. And there are... Uh, well, well, I've got one of them. The Crown Vic was one of my, my dream cars because I always thought they were incredibly cool. The fact you can engineer a car that'll do half a million miles for $20,000 and you know, work every single day of its life. That is more impressive than a Ferrari to me. Um, I'd love a Ferrari Dino, had that said. Uh, the 70s Alphas, the beautiful early Land Rovers. I have too many dream cars, honestly. Um, a lot of them are very normal, not very exciting at all to ordinary people. But the Alpha 145, that was one of my dream cars, and I finally found one. So I've still got that. Um, the 200 Vi wasn't like top-tier dream car, but because of the rarity and the interesting, because I used to have a 200 bubble back in the 90s, that was on my list of dreamish cars, so now I've got one of them. But yeah, weird stuff. Uh, very, very few, for, for, yeah, virtually no Ferraris and things. Have I ever been to watch banger racing? Not live, no. Um, I know, bizarrely, quite a few people who do banger racing actually in person. But I've never been to see it. I keep meaning to go and do it. it would be, it's, it's an interesting thing, yeah. I had a whole video on, on the pros and cons of it waiting to be made. Huh. Who needs an SUV when you can have a 4x4 estate? Should be on a t-shirt. Yeah, it should actually, shouldn't it? Maybe I'll work on that one. Would I ever buy a Rover Metro? It's a Rover 1 litre. <laughs> it's a Rover... It's a, it's a Metro Lynn. Not fooling anyone. Um, yeah, I probably would go for an old Austin one rather than a Rover one. But yeah. Will I fly to Sweden to review Adam's beautiful red P6? Uh, Adam, um, not... I, not Dry driver classic, living with a classic. Adam is a very nice guy who helped us out magnificently when we drove the Volvo 740 to um, to Gothenburg at the beginning of the year. Remember, friend Barry, this is uh, our clutch went, and 
Adam came and rescued us. He towed us off the motorway slip road in a 1975 Jaguar XJ, <laughs> which was an impressive moment, uh, a very unique moment in motoring history. A Volvo 740 being towed by a 70s Jag off the Swedish motorway with the British person in the Swedish car and the Swedish person in the British car. And uh, yeah. Now, he's got a lovely, a really good channel called um, yeah, Living With A Classic. He's recently just kind of gone full time with it, left his day job to go full time with this channel. So real good luck to, to him. Uh, but yeah, he, he bought a barn find P6 V8. And unlike me, when I buy, buy a cheap barn find that, you know, he paid quite a good price for it because it's an unknown quantity. It turned out to be absolutely perfect. And he's daily driving it. Um, yeah, I would actually quite like to go back and, and do that um, at some point because it's lovely. He's got a few other cars I could do. I could make a whole week of driving his cars. Uh, S-Type Jags, I believe the early ones are full based. Yes, they are. They, uh, it's the LES98 or something, or LSE98 platform. But yeah, it's a Lincoln and a, and a like Thunderbird. Uh, Stefan borrowed a Kia Picando automatic on Friday and yesterday from a mate, and it was a horrible thing to drive with a Mark III Focus. Just had a new steering rack, so from uh, so yeah, that yeah, your, your Mark III Focus is going to be significantly nicer. A couple of years back, when I first just first started this channel, I hadn't really sort of found my feet on it because this was golden content, which I didn't really do as much as I could have done with. I tried to do sort of bangonomics thing with a Mark III Mondeo Estate, I paid it under a grand for it, and then loads of trouble. When I, so I drove it straight to a garage to have a load of work done to it. On the way home from the garage, it got written off. A car came through a traffic light that was on green for me, red for him, and T-boned it, wrote the thing off, and I bought it back and put it back on the road again. But anyway, while the car was temporarily off the road, the insurance company gave me a Hyundai... What's the huge Hyundai SUV? And that was an automatic, and it was the worst car I've ever driven. Um, gearbox, the hand, everything. No, yeah. So it's, a lot of the Kias I've driven are incredible. But yeah, Kia Picanto and Auto Box, that'd be just awful. Absolutely awful. What's the best car that you've worked on, says Alan? Um, a couple of options here. Rover P6 is very easy to work on, apart from some of the complicated suspension and rear brakes. So I'm going to rule that one out. Classic Mini is proving very easy to work on. I'm liking that. But actually, the Punto, the Punto is an absolute doddle. Changing the timing belt on that thing was so simple. Loved it. Oh, 2018 Seat FR facelift. Oh, I'll try and find one. They are nice. Race Betty with a 75, what would win? Uh, probably the 75. It's the 1.8 turbo, so it's probably about three seconds quicker to 60. Um, will you have a 200 BRM? Uh, yeah, do you know I'd quite like a 200 BRM. I always wanted one back in the day, but the 200 VI is basically the same thing without the blingy bits. Um, you don't get the nice differential in the 200 VI that you get in the BRM. Uh... But the VI is infinitely rarer. The last Pride of Longbridge I went to, I saw a lineup of about 50 BRMs, um, but I didn't see any VIs. And there's only about 15 of them left on the road, so I, I kind of prefer the rarity. But yeah, I would quite like a BRM as well. That's the only solution when you get two of them. They're small, 200 are small, so you can you can have loads of them. Martin used to do banger racing as well. You know, a couple of the people who do bang racing or used to do banger racing they've had to kind of stop because it hurts now <laughs> which car is oh, the comments are jumping uh which car is better in my opinion the golf r or the leon cupra well they are basically exactly the same car but i would go for the leon because you get more more equipment for for less money and it's exactly the same equipment um and i think it looks a bit sharper as well and the golf looks a bit stayed whereas the uh, the leon is a bit of a sharper look and it's a bit more individual Please buy an old Jap car that needs some work. Yeah, do you know I'd love an old Jap car? Yeah. I used to have a Mark 1 M MR2, which I regret selling, but when the guy who bought it for me got in contact about a year later to show me a photo of it, it was literally a bare shell, and there were holes rusted in the roof. Everything was rusty on it. It was awful. But a great car to drive, though. Jason, we do banger racing. We'd like to have a go at some point. Oh, man, that'd be cool. Actual driving a banger racing... That would be exciting, yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun, yeah. Yes, send me an email. 
Dinosaur Dad, I'm an expert watching in Melbourne. Are you doing the NEC next month? I'm flying over to go around the show. Yes, well, gosh, didn't you see the title of the, the, uh, the video? This is the big news that this whole uh, live chat video thing is, is aimed at explaining. We've gone off topic quite significantly for the last hour. Yes, next week, or next month, sorry, early next month, NEC, a uh, uh, classic motor show. Myself, Steph from my driver classic, Ian from Hubnut, we are sharing a stand, putting the band back together. We're all going to be there. It's either Hall 3A or 3, as I said earlier. The map they've sent us a picture of, it shows Hall 3 at the, A at the top of the map, but I'm not sure if, because there are some doors on the map as well, it's Hall 3 and they've just cut the bottom off because helpful. Um, so yeah, Hall 3 slash 3A, we're going to be there. We're still in discussion about what cars to take. Steph is confirmed that she's taking Tina and the Marina. I'm very likely to take the Alpha 145, but we also have Waiting in the Wings, 200 VI, and even the Freelander. Because I think it would be really cool to take the Freelander up and put the tent up there. That would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Just have a roof tent. So anyone could find us from miles away across the, stand, the hall, just look for the roof tent in the distance. Because you can never find us otherwise. But we have got quite a good uh, location this time. We're quite near an entrance. We're sort of quite near a, a thoroughfare by the look of it on the map. So it should be quite a good, good spot for us to be there. Um, we're going to have a ticket giveaway announced next week. And we're going to have a discount code announced next week. So hold off buying your tickets for the moment. Because there's going to be money off with our discount codes but we haven't got the information from the NEC yet, so we can't do it yet. <laughs> but we're also going to have, I say, giveaways as well. Oh, yeah, Max, I love that final generation Thunderbird. Definitely something like to try in the future. Yeah, this looks to be quite fun. I love that whole retro styling thing they were doing on them. Um, race bit, oh, I don't know. Yeah, Santa, oh, Santa Fe, yeah, it was a Santa Fe. It was horrible. Really, really nasty car, the Hyundai Santa Fe. Oh, was it Tucson? That no, was a Tucson, I think it was. Massive SUV, the vaguest steering I've ever driven. The suspension was woolly as anything, and the automatic gearbox was just utterly hopeless. Kia Picanto 1 litre manual, though. I did do a review on one of them about 18 months, two years ago. Really good. As Super Minis go, I really, really enjoyed it. The X-Type is a Mark III Mondeo in a pretty frock. Well, actually, there's mm, more to it than that because there's a lot of co-development going on, especially in the um, the faster way. If you look at the top-end sports Mondeos, they've actually got Jaguar components in them rather than Ford. So the suspension parts are stamped Jaguar. So there's a lot of cross-pollination going on there. And people say, oh, X-Type's only a Mondeo. Mark III Mondeo is brilliant. That's a high, one of the highest accolades of the early noughties motoring you can offer. So, yeah, it's definitely not a criticism. Uh, Gavin says, what is it, a Santa Fe? Because he had one as a company car and hated it as well, put him off SUVs. It's either a Santa Fe or a Tucson. I've tried to black it out. And I was driving around sort of the West Country and Wales in it and little tiny country twisty lanes that should have been huge fun. Were just... <sighs> Miserable. Fancy trying a W209 CLK500. Oh, 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 free this evening. Oh, Adam, um, drop me a message. I'm not sure if I'm free or not, but drop me a message. I'll try and maybe work that one out. Cause before I do a video, it takes about two hours of, of research as well. It's already one and half past one. Uh, send me an email about the, the CLK. Yes. Scotty Kilmer says, Kia engines are rubbish. Scotty Kilmer says, everything that's not a Toyota is rubbish. <laughs> if I could respray one of my cars, which one would I do? Well, I currently need to repaint the 200 VI, the Tomcat and the Classic Mini. So if I was going to do one myself, I might start with the Classic Mini because that was the smallest and therefore easiest. And it's not, meta not metallic either, so that would be one I'd maybe do myself. But of course, we've also got the, two, the 420 in the paint shop at the moment. Painting cars is a serious... Oh, the W123 needs paint as well. And the Rover 2000, actually, if you look at it closely, they need paint also. And the V8 Rover P6 was painted really nicely, but where it was parked outside by the last garage that had it... Um, it's been, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to have to do some heavy machine polishing, possibly some repainting, and where a tent blew down on it that was meant to be keeping it safe. That's damaged. It's only some painting. Everything needs paint. Why does everything need paint? Only this car, oh, only this car doesn't need paint. But I'm selling it, so yeah. Manual six speed Mondeos are awesome. Yeah, they are fantastic, yeah. NEC, I'll be floating around with beards and bangers. Oh, okay, and smashing pistons. You'll come and say hello in all 3 slash 3A. Ah, Robert Prinky disappeared to go into <laughs> a throttle cable and a Volvo. He's come back having completed it. Success. The new throttle cable is in and the pedal is silky smooth. 
Well, it's job well done. Job well jobbed. Yeah, Scotty says that European cars are rubbish, but fails to mention they're built in America or Mexico. Yeah, that is a thing. A lot of American market cars aren't the same as you get in Europe or Japan because because of import tariffs and things, chicken tax. And they're all built in America or Mexico. And when the Merc SL, sorry, ML first came out, they were all built in America, Alabama, I believe. And they come over here and the quality was just abysmal compared with the, the German built cars. Uh, interesting about Mercedes C-Class is the estates are all built in single Felden, so if you get a Mercedes C-Class estate, it's generally notably better quality than the rest of the range, which is built in other places. I think Poland or Hungary, I think. Um, a lot of them built in South Africa as well, um, which are actually very well made uh, for the Mercedes range. But yeah, the American. I rented a RAV4 in America, and it was an American. I think it was a US-built RAV4, and it did not feel anywhere near as good as the Toyotas I was driving. I had driven here in Britain. Anyway. Have I seen the movie Book of Eli? Have I noticed the old rover in the post-apocalyptic street? No, I haven't seen the film, but I've seen that still. I've seen a screen grab of it, and I'm going to go and watch it now. He used to have a Mark III Mondeo, jokingly called it a jag in drag, yeah. <laughs> Please donate the Crown Vic to Ukraine. I'm not sure what they would do with a very rusty car with no floor. Um, hide behind it, perhaps? I think I've got enough problems as it is without me doing that to them, poor guys. If It's Hub not taking Bob... So I can show us, uh, we've done that previously, did, did it last year, but it, it was an enjoyable escapade and we made a couple of videos about it. Um, but ultimately we decided that it's more convenient being in an on-site hotel because then you can get to and from the location. It's a very long, tiring day working a show at the NEC. So the closer you are to food and your hotel room, the better. So you can just sort of go back and crash and then not have to wake up an hour earlier than necessary and just stroll straight in. That makes life a lot easier, because having to park every day as well, that was just, yeah, another sort of hour's journey. America are using EU motors more and more these days. I watched a movie about lampposts in New York and so lots of EU cars. Yeah, are they uh, built in the EU, though? Because they get um, all the certification things, but then they set up factories within America. Uh, a lot in Ohio are built, I think, for... Uh, Ohio, Alabama and Mexico for a lot of European brands build their own cars basically copies of the European brand cars in America for the American market charge the lines with the Crown Vic yeah. you need a post 2003 one because the 2002s don't the bulletproof doors we have, an, we have the Aussie built Toyotas and they're pretty good my 2010 3.5 litre Camry has 200,000 miles on it never missed a beat so Scotty is bang on Sadly, not a lot of rovers there. No, not anymore, no. I believe BMW's first US factory was built for the Z3. Um, that investment is why they barred Rover from selling the MGF in the States. Oh, that's interesting. And why Z3s are so terribly made. Yeah. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, do, 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 do. Right, we've been on now for 82 minutes. My tea, what's left of it, is very cold indeed. So I am going to say thank you for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this little chat today, the Sunday lunchtime chat. Uh, and don't forget to come and say hello to us over at the NEC. Watch out next week for videos and social media posts saying about giveaways and discount codes for the NEC. Um, I've got a whole bunch of new mugs and things coming and stickers and what have you to bring with me because try and mix things up a little bit uh, last couple of comments um have i watched marcus hayes with esther and Maud? no i haven't I'll, I'll screenshot that one as well got loads of stuff to watch off the back of this video if i was to import another car what would it be oh my word um honestly don't know maybe something from europe this time go and get like a fiat 500 from italy that'd be quite fun or there's that weird i said this on twitter the other day weird uh saab subaru mix-up thing they did or something Japanese, I'll get something Japanese. That'd be... Yeah, something from Japan, but I don't know what. Uh, last. Oh, thank you, 69. Andy, goodbye. Max, have a great Sunday. Edward, have a nice weekend. And Martin, all right, I'm going to say, how on earth do we send this off? It's so long since I've done one of these things, I've forgotten how you sign off and hit with the off button. Right, have a great weekend, everybody, and I'll see you all very soon. Are you sure you want to end stop streaming? I am.